First of all, I would like to thank you for taking the time to come. The honor is ours, my lord. As per our custom, here we are all together to discuss the face of tomorrow's world. Even though there may be certain tensions between our nations, I must ask you to keep an open mind. As Sarah de Richet is unable to be among us, please welcome Louis de Richet, who will represent the Golden Order and will vote on its behalf when the time comes. Welcome among us, Louis. Welcome, Monsieur I hope he'll be more effective than his mother regarding the protection of the King of France. The Order has proved particularly inefficient. Come, Manuel, you're not going to spoil our visit. The Order's mission was not to protect King Louis XVI, as far as I am aware. We are talking about the King of Divine Blood, for goodness sake. It seemed obvious to me he needed protecting. If the Golden Order wants to pride itself on being an influential organization, it should have kept him alive. Thank you all. I am honored to be among you today. I will strive to represent the interests of the Order as best I can. Perhaps we may begin, Lord Mortimer. Certainly. I have a dream that our nations will continue to support each other, more now than ever before. A dream that, for the sake of common good, we will do what it takes to ensure stability in the modern world. I have a dream that we shall lead by example and ensure that the American territory may remain in peace. Thank you for the thought, Lord Mortimer, but I don't see where you're leading. I'm coming to it, Mr. President. I need not remind you that North America is currently divided between the United States on the East Coast and Spain, which occupies the remaining two-thirds of the continent. Well, I propose that Spain cede the center of the continent to France, namely all of Louisiana. Louisiana? But, well, it is not for sale. Lord Mortimer, I sincerely hope I have not come all this way just to hear you ramble on about what Spain should and should not do. When we went to all the trouble of gaining the territory a few years ago, it was not just to lose it today. Have I made myself clear? What did I tell you, William? You speak of union, and yet here you are, about to tear us apart. Duke Manuel, I perfectly understand you. But rest assured, you will soon adore my proposition. You shall see. Well, since you give me the choice, my good fellow, allow me to doubt it. However, I am impatient to hear what Spain could possibly gain from the sale of Louisiana. I never spoke of a sale, my good fellow. What? But... I do not understand. There is one more territory left to conquer, if I'm not mistaken, in the Northwest. It is, of course, occupied by your notorious Indians, but... We shall soon be rid of the savages, so that is not the question. Duke Manuel, I believe that Spain should cede Louisiana to France free of charge. This is utterly grotesque, Lord Mortimer. What a strange example you set for your young protégé. Isn't that so, Monsieur de Richet? Do you understand anything of this proposition? I must say, William, I find your project mostly disfavors me. I thought you were my friend. And I am, Mr. President. That is why I'm doing everything in my power to calm your expansionist fervor. France, in Louisiana, should persuade you not to attempt anything to take the territory by force. Louisiana is a vast wetland where you would needlessly lose most of your troops. It would weaken you and offer certain nations the perfect opportunity to take back your famous United States. I am protecting you from yourself, George. Trust me. I understand. But with friends like you, sir, I certainly don't need any more enemies. I hope you know what you're doing. Am I a 
imagining things, or does it look like Washington isn't aware of Mortimer's plan? Not to put too fine a point on it, Lord Mortimer, uh, but I doubt the Holy See would be in favor of Catholic Louisiana being handed over to secular revolutionaries and king killers. I should think Monsieur de Richet has an opinion on this subject, does he not? Your Eminence, have no fear over that. I am sure France will do everything in its power to protect the Christians of Louisiana. My young friend, how can you come out with such a remark after the discussion we had on the evening of your arrival? If France was so respectful of worship, it would not be bleeding priests as it is doing at this very moment in time. <sighs> Don't be naive. This is politics. The Holy See must be concerned at seeing such a large territory falling into the hands of the French. Mi auguro che insegnerete l'educazione a questo giovanotto presuntuoso, Sir Gregory. I hope that you will teach this pretentious young man some manners, Sir Gregory. It looks like I won't be just making friends here. In any case, my lord, I doubt the English crown will agree. Ich will sicher Ihnen, Emily, nie preußen wird diese Vereinbarung akzeptieren. I assure you, Emily, the Prussian will never accept this agreement. Volner looks like he's set on ruining Mortimer's plan. Duchess, I am persuaded that we shall find a common ground. That's enough, William. These are great times. We don't care about the fate of Louisiana. That worthless expanse of putrid swamps interests no one but yourself. Speak for yourself, my friend. Hold on there, Mr. Royal Gigolo. Lower the volume and let Sir Gregory finish. Holm, Godoy, and now Volner? Mortimer's adversaries are ready to tear each other to pieces, and he takes a malicious pleasure in watching it happen. How dare Gentlemen, you! Gentlemen, let us try to remain calm. There you are, William. See where your projects have taken us, as per usual. Chaos! That's enough. I'm tired. We shall continue this discussion tomorrow, but please be aware that your project will never be ratified. Those who are opposed to this project, Follow me. Are you coming with us, Monsieur de Richer? Come, Gregory. I think Louis would rather stay. Wouldn't you, Louis? As for me, I think I shall remain with Lord Mortimer, Sir Gregory. You are committing a grave error, Louis. Time will tell. My friends, I would like to thank you for staying. Good God, William. What is this I hear about you reinforcing military power in Louisiana? I have no interest in having France for a neighbor, and you know that very well. Calm down, George. Louis, explain our plan to Mr. Washington, please. You see, Mr. President, Lord Mortimer anticipates that once France obtains Louisiana, they will cede it to you. What do you mean? To us? The United States? You heard right. But I... President Washington, the United States will double in size. By what miracle have you... You need to expand, George. You and France are the two major democracies in the modern world. 
It is necessary that you both become superpowers. Are you really going to sponsor democracy throughout the world? Of course, Monsieur Peru. That's why I don't want Spain to get too attached to those weapons. Uh, please continue, Louis. Explain my vision to Mr. President. By going through France, Spain won't suspect that it's you who's going to take possession of Louisiana. They'll even believe that France will be a protective buffer between itself and California and you on the East Coast. If Senor Godoy was afraid that you might take the territory by force, now he is reassured. You would never attack France. But why didn't you tell me before? So, home doesn't see it coming, but by the time it dawns on Senor Godoy, it'll be too late because he'll realize that he's just lost all the North American continent. We all know that you won't stop once the path is cleared before you. What do you mean? You see, Monsieur Peru, it's very likely that once Louisiana becomes American, President Washington will push out even more and take the West Coast. William, you haven't changed. Always one step ahead. One step ahead? You're joking. More like five. On that note, my friends, it's getting late. Mr. President, continue to take offense over my project when we resume the conference in the morning. You do it to a T. And if Sir Gregory has the audacity to send you an emissary to convince you to go against me, do me a favor. String him along if you can. The more they believe we are divided, the more we'll have our hands free. Only too happy to oblige. Now, let us get some rest. We've got a big day tomorrow. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Louis, if you have a minute, I would like to ask a favor of you. I'm going to require your services. How can I be of help? Tell me all about it. Our adversaries are many, and the closing vote of the conference will soon be upon us. Time is of an essence. So, I'll need you to assist me this evening. How can I help? I need you to go this very evening to persuade Senor Godoy to join us. He is the backbone of Gregory's resistance. Turn him round, and all the others will follow in such a stampede that Gregory will be able to do nothing but admit defeat. Lord Mortimer, with all due respect, don't you think I'm the last person Godoy wants to talk to? I'm sure you can do it. I believe in you. Lord Mortimer, you're not telling me everything. Let's say I wouldn't disapprove if the right honorable, though nonetheless choleric, Duke Manuel put you in his bad books. If it could motivate him to declare war on France, it would greatly serve our interests. War? What do you mean? I told you before the conference. The more we distract Spain from the Americas, the less it will have an eye on Louisiana. But all the same, we're talking about a war in Europe. Don't worry. That's why Mr. Bonaparte is with us. I am convinced we'll be perfectly capable of managing the conflict. And Signor Godoy is not a great soldier. He will not commit Spain to a long war that he won't be capable of managing. I'll go straight away. Thank you, my boy. And get some rest afterwards. Big day tomorrow. Hmm, which four-letter word could open this chest?
I know it's the stair say from Roman Call. Dante's Purgatory. Why does your mind presume to flight when you're still like the imperfect grub, the worm before it's attained its final form? Charming. Monsieur Johann von Wollner. Chest locked with a four letter code, surely a word close to the owner's heart. Golden Elixir. Fragment of amber. Great Work of the Soul by S. Madone. Pure alchemy is a thought, an art that is performed on the matter of the soul. Great alchemists work to transform and perfect the latter by a series of processes known as the Great Work. There are four phases to attain the ultimate in spiritual fulfillment. The soul must be transformed in order to attain sublimation by the recombination of the alchemist. It's tempting. Thus ends the great work, the incarnation of the purified spirit, the elevation of the soul now become perfect, its resurrection, thanks to the action of the alchemist. Except if the alchemist has bad intentions, then it's called manipulation. The soul broken up must be purified by the alchemist. Nice program. The human soul must descend, be corrupt, in order to become decomposed. It's something like what I felt when I think of what I found out about my mother. 
very metaphorical as occult theories go, the human spirit being the prima materia of the alchemist. President George Washington. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Huh, that's me. Duke Manuel Godoy. Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer is giving to his guests. Very jolly. Manuel Godoy, a painting of himself in his room. Now that's not going to help him develop a sense of modesty. Mary Louise of Parma. <laughs> How ironic having a painting of the Queen of Spain in one's room, my Lord Duke. Hey, it looks like someone slipped something in the back here. It's a letter. Let's see what it says. It reeks of perfume, and it's written in Spanish. Godoy, you really are a little devil. So, let's see what it says. It seems that the Queen isn't the only one enjoying the Lord Duke's favors. Hmm, if the Queen found out, it would cost him dearly. I'll keep it with me, you never know.
Don Quixote. Talking without thinking is like shooting without taking aim. Hmm. I'm gonna have to think about that one. of Parma. Although not Godoy's true love, the queen is his benefactress according to some people. Don Quixote. Talking without thinking is like shooting without taking aim. Hmm. I'm gonna have to think about that one. Prometheus. Punished for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to man. Ah, Monsieur de Richet. Uh, you wouldn't have seen Duke Manuel by any chance, would you? I was going to ask you the same question. I wanted to speak to him, but no one will open the door. I'm not sure he's in there. If I want to pass through, I'll have to get Volner out of the way. Excuse me, but I must fetch a letter for the Duke. Very well, sir. You may pass. Volner is probably still behind the door. I best go out through the balcony just in case. Ah, 
Monsieur de Richet, uh, you wouldn't have seen Duke Manuel by any chance, would you? I was going to ask you the same question. I wanted to speak to him, but no one will open the door. I'm not sure he's in there. If I want to pass through, I'll have to get Volner out of the way. He won't let me buy. I'll have to find another way of getting into the damned room. Four circles. Dear Monsieur Peru, all right, I've retrieved everything. Dear Monsieur, all right, I've retrieved everything. This is Thursday. Records of the police. Notes intended for the police lieutenant of Paris. It's a list of people under surveillance in Paris. And there's some well-known names on it. This is valuable information. This shouldn't be lying around.
Amber. Monsieur Johann von Wulner. Cash. Chest with a half circle pattern. An untutored hand copied these notes. Looks like a healing method. Well, that's a pity. The writing is barely legible. President's personal reserve of laudanum, and judging by the quantity, he can't go without it. Ah, there's also a letter. My dear George, Thorn. I'll keep it. Monsignor, his eminence Cardinal Piaggi. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. Have you seen Duke Manuel? The Duke is in the dining room, sir.
I would like to come in. I am sorry, sir, but that is not possible for the moment. I'm looking for someone. Tell me at least who's in there so I don't needlessly go looking around for hours. Uh, Duchess Hillsborough is speaking with Sir Gregory, sir. The other guests have gone back to their rooms through the other side. Very well. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Duke Manuel? Well, well. Monsieur de Richet, I was not expecting you. I am not in the mood, sir, I warn you. What do you want from me, sir? I see you're still feeling under pressure. Since your arrival, I've noticed that you've been on the defensive. Huh. It seems to me that Monsieur Perru has a knack for getting your back up. That is the least you can say. Indeed. I was warned. I knew what to expect. For God's sake! Why in the hell did your people execute their king? Have the French gone stark, raving mad? There are nothing but monarchies in power in Europe. They will all come crashing down on you. We shall see. It might well turn out to be the opposite. <laughs> you certainly do not lack for audacity, young man. Just tell me one thing, monsieur. Why did you side with Mortimer? He is alone. Isolated. The United States can do nothing to help you, and France is surrounded by over ten countries just waiting for the word to pounce. Really. I do not see why you choose Mortimer. Golden Order, my friend. The Order is everywhere. We come from France, we are President of the United States, England, and many other countries. We have ambitions and the means to carry them out. You'll see, once all hell breaks out and your English support starts to fade away. The Order is an international organization. It matters little what governments do. Otherwise, why would Mortimer have gone to the trouble of inviting my mother? Hmm, ah. If you are right, Sir Gregory has got it all wrong. Tell me, do you really believe Spain has any interest in ceding Louisiana to France? Duke Manuel. For Spain, I don't know. But for you, I'm convinced that Lord Mortimer will thank you generously. Ah, uh, you would not be trying to bribe me, would you? Nothing could be further from my mind. It would be an insult to believe that someone such as yourself might have a practical attitude towards its virtue. Even so, it is only natural that you be supported and encouraged if you were to follow Lord Mortimer, isn't it? 
Indeed, for services rendered, it would be natural for me to receive compensation for the time spent achieving such an undertaking, yes? Naturally. And, given your status, my Lord Duke, the compensation would have to be considerable. Naturally. Tell me one last thing. What would I gain from all this? You unshackle yourself from Sir Gregory, who, let's face it, takes up a lot of space. What are you talking about? My friend, I'm guessing that you wouldn't mind getting a little freedom from the overbearing control he exerts? I would never have gotten where I am today without him. He is an influential man, who is true to his word, and who has always given me his full attention. But he obliges you to- That's enough. I will not allow you to stab him in the back. Sir Gregory is a respectable gentleman, and your petty manipulations have no effect on me. If that is your only argument, then you are on the wrong track. My Lord Duke, in these uncertain times, I believe it would be to your advantage to be rid of Louisiana in order to focus your attention on your colonies in the South. It will show the court the man you really are and how much you truly deserve your position. And it will silence all the jibes and jeers aimed at my person. Then people would only see me as the man who consolidated the frontiers of the Spanish Empire. What a statesman you are. Come on, you fool, give it up. You're trapped like a rat. Monsieur, I am astounded. I did not think you capable, but you have succeeded. I will be more wary of you the next time. Nonetheless, if you can guarantee Lord Mortimer's support, then yes, you can count on my vote when the time comes. However, I expect you to be discreet with regard to my former partners, without which our agreement will become null and void. Of course, my Lord Duke. You can count on me. Lord Mortimer will be delighted to hear the news. I hope you know what you are getting into, Louis. I bid you good luck. Good night, my Lord Duke. See you tomorrow. Well, that's one thing out of the way. The only thing left to do is wait for the conference to resume tomorrow morning. Good evening, Monsieur le Francais. Duchess, you're here. What a charming surprise. I'm beginning to think you can't be without me. You have managed to penetrate my armor, sir. Am I disturbing you, perhaps? That's not what I said. Ah, by the way, you surprised me during the conference. Why is that? Well, you are going to lose. Why stay with Lord Mortimer? I believe he has every chance of winning. My, you are a rash one. However, if ever you want to change sides, please feel free to let me know. But tell me, you didn't come here to try and make me change my mind, did you? That's the last thing on my mind, although you would have everything to gain by it. There's no point trying to persuade me. Don't hold it against me. Of course not, silly. Louis, if you trust me, you ought to ask yourself why I have chosen home. You do trust me, don't you? Of course, Emily. 
You know you have my full trust. Louis, you're lying. That's not good. Any more of that and I might get upset. Admit, though, that it does make you think. There's still time, you know. Join us before it's too late. Unfortunately, my word is my bond. I don't want to leave Lord Mortimer in the lurch. Very well, as you wish. It's up to you to decide. Tell me, are these visits to Mortimer's always so intense? Yes and no. My sister doesn't normally disappear like she has. Any news of your mother? Well, I should imagine you're still shaken. I promise to shed light on my mother's circumstances as soon as possible. There's not much to shed light on. What your mother did is inexcusable. She won the trust of my sister in order to more easily betray her. She didn't do anything to her. I... Can we change subject, please? I didn't come here to go through all that again. Of course, it's late. You're right. Come, Louis. My friends, do not worry. I assure you that Lord Mortimer's plan will never see the light of day. I shall deal with informing our allies, but for the time being, I need you to make a stand. What do you think about Monsieur de Richet? I don't know yet. I feel there's great potential in him. He looks like he can be trusted. And uh, Duchess Hillsborough. Why isn't she here? She's busy. Don't worry about her. Oh, isn't it time to replace her? Not so fast, sir. She is an important figure. You ought to have a little more faith in her. What are we going to do about Washington? He will be a hard nut to crack. On our chessboard, he is Mortimer's king. Don't worry. Mr. President only wants one thing. To keep his dear America united. He won't jeopardize everything he has achieved on a whim. He has been serving Mortimer for quite some time. It won't be easy to uh, bring him around. Do you feel all right, Mr. Godoy? You haven't said a word. Please excuse me, gentlemen. I feel tired. Oh, I see. I think it is high time you left us then. Now! Emily? Emily? Are you there? Sir, the conference is about to begin. You are expected in the conference room. Tell them I'm coming. Thank you. Come on, Louis. The game is back on. My friends, the conference is about to begin. Please excuse me if I troubled you last night with my project. I understand that you might well have a few questions to ask. As you know, the final vote will be cast in a few days. This morning's aim is to answer your questions and check the temperature of your respective positions so that we may reach a greater understanding. As always, Lord Mortimer. Uh, we parted in perfect disagreement, my lord. Where would you like us to take it from? Come, sir. Please let William believe he still has a chance of winning us over. Otherwise, his imprecations will lack panache, and we shall be bored stiff. Oh, let me reassure you, I am 
convinced that a good night's sleep has brought sound advice and that this morning will be even more interesting. Therefore, I would like to go around the table in order to hear everyone's first impressions. Well, I am still firmly against it. Even though my choice won't count. Against. 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 And you, Luke Manuel? Well, you see, uh, it is more complicated than it... it Good uh, boy. Calm, Gregory. Don't try to impress my guests, please. They are not your guests. Gregory, anyone under my roof is, by definition, my guest. You included. I would be very grateful if you would let my guests speak. Duke Manuel, you were saying you still had some doubts? Well, you see, the situation has changed since last night. What's going on here, my Lord Duke? You see, I gave it some thought during the night. New arguments have come to light. What do you mean, Duke Manuel? Sir Gregory, I regret to inform you that Spain will not support you in this operation. I vote for. Moreover, in response to arguments brought to my attention, I declare war on France. What? What is he doing? If you think France is afraid of you, you are dreaming. Over ten nations rise against you, young man. And you behave like a yapping little dog. When the French armies are at your door, my Lord Duke, you will change your tune. Well, as for me, I am for Lord Mortimer's project. Despite Duchesse Hillsborough's overwhelmingly convincing nocturnal attentions. What? So Emily was playing at trying to win over guests last night? It was nothing more than a friendly little chat, of course. How could it be otherwise? And by the way, remember me to your husband when you see him. And you, President Washington, what is your position? Four, of course. Well, that leaves just yourself and Monsieur Peru, Louis. You're all making me sick. Look at yourselves. What? You are pathetic! Have you been drinking or what? There you are, quibbling away. My lord, do this. And Madame Duchesse, that! You know very well that we're nothing but puppets on a damn string! Jacques! Camille! Let's end the charade! It's over! Jacques. My lord, thank you for everything you've done for me over the years. But it didn't come for free. And now I see the price is too high to pay. I'll stop. Come, Jacques. We'll talk it over. No, I'm finished. I want my freedom back, my lord. I shall no longer work for you. I've had enough of your money, your influence, your power! I want my freedom back! I want my damn life back! I don't understand. I spoke to him only recently. Monsieur Perrault has lost his mind. It's obvious. 
Yet another way for the French to make a spectacle of themselves. Well, once again it has worked. My friends, let us settle down, please. We are all in shock, of course. It's absolutely incomprehensible. As you say. No idea what he could have blamed himself for. But the poor man was literally racked with remorse. What a pity he did not seek the mercy of the Lord. He is forever damned now. I think everyone needs a little rest. Can you stay a moment? Of course. <laughs> <laughs>